Doom Rocket Launcher, part one. The format of this build series is going to be slightly different than what I've done before because I was tired of taking a week to build something and then days to edit it and then put it out and it's half hour, an hour long. I feel like that's too much. So I'm going to break this down and make a video every day this week of me building this rocket launcher. And I'm going to take my old rocket launcher that I made a long time ago and I'm going to break it apart and use some stuff out of this to build the new one. It looks like this. It's the rocket launcher from the new Doom game and I'm going to use these to do today's portion of the video. So since I'm doing a multiple part series today, I'm going to show you how I plan and decide how I'm going to build something and this picture is a big part of that. So this build video is going to be planning out exactly what I'm going to do and I have some ideas in my head but I'll show you how I work out everything to get this thing turned into this thing that looks really awesome because this is just a tube that shoots rockets out of it. This will be a tube that shoots rockets out of it also, but it's gonna look really awesome when it's done. These three tools are your best friend. Pencil, a ruler, and this. And this kind of takes the place of the ruler, but it makes it super easy, and the ruler still helps. This measures very accurately, and it helps you get the size of what you're gonna make, because you need to figure out how big it's gonna be before you actually start to build it. When you look at this, you think, how could I possibly figure out how big this is supposed to be? Well, if this is the point that sits on top of your shoulder and that's where your hand goes, it's probably going to be the same distance between here and here that it would be on a rifle. And this is just an airsoft gun, but it's uh, one to one scale. So this will be the distance between there and there. So that'll give me my first ratio to figure out how big this is gonna be. Another thing that I can use is the grip right here, the foregrip that will be the size of the grip on the rifle. Um, so I'll use those two things to give me my ratios for how big this is going to be. And then I'll measure for how big across that's going to be right there, the front of the tube. And then this is a different diameter, so I'll figure out how big that is. And that'll be the size of the inside tube that I use. And then I know that I'm going to have to add material on the outside. I'm going to measure this stuff, and then I'll show you how the ratios work out. Planning isn't something that I'm good at, but I do need to figure this stuff out before I start building it. So this is one of the only times that you'll ever see me plan. Other than that, it's mostly figure out what I'm doing as I go along. Usually I don't have a problem using American Standard, which is inches, but in this I use millimeters and centimeters and all that because it's so much easier to convert when you're doing ratios. So I'll take from the trigger to the front of where your shoulder would sit on the back of the rocket launcher, and that is 82 millimeters. Write that down. Then you're gonna measure from where the trigger well starts to the back of the stock, and that will be your ratio. So for every 82 millimeters, it will be 310 millimeters when I make the full size one. Now I just measure a bunch of other stuff and I come up with my dimensions and write it down. So I used the measurement from the front of the trigger wheel to where it would hit your shoulder and then compared that to the airsoft rifle and that gave me 1 over 3.78. So basically every measurement I take from the picture in millimeters gets multiplied by 3.78 and that's my size in millimeters in real life, right? Because this is 1 over 3.78 scale, the picture is. So to check that, I measured this grip and it's 23 millimeters on the picture and if I multiply that by 3.78 it gives me 85 I believe which is the size of this grip so my ratio is good so that's what I'm gonna do 1 over 3.78 I'll get my final measurements because now I have all my measurements for the pieces in the picture now I'll get my measurements for them in real life so to check my math I wrote down all of my lengths of everything on the picture and 82 over 310 is the same as 1 over 3.78 so I'm gonna stick with 3.8 because it's a nice round number so that's my ratio 1 over 3.8 so every measurement that I take from the picture it's multiplied by 3.8 to give me the length in real life so I just multiply everything now to check it I need some other things that are standard on this that I can 
figure out if my ratio is correct because that front of where your shoulder should be to where the trigger well is at might not be that right. So the grip length, the foregrip length right here is 23 millimeters. And if you multiply that by 3.8, it comes out to like 85, I think it was. And that's how many millimeters long foregrip is on this. So I know that my ratio is right now. So now I just need to multiply everything by 3.8 and I'll get the overall lengths for everything that this is gonna be. I screwed up in my explanation and you may have noticed that I didn't use this. So before I show you the materials, let me tell you why. I measure first with the ruler and get everything done. And then I go back and measure with this because they always say measure twice, cut once. So this is when I figure out if I screwed up any of my measurements and usually I don't. So I wrote it all down, but if I do have to change it, it doesn't take very long. But this is much more accurate to figure out all your dimensions and measure everything. So now I'm going to use this and I wanted you to know that. And now I'll show you the materials. So the ratio that I found for the tube worked out really well because I was hoping that it would be exactly the size and it is. This is PVC sewage pipe and it's three inches and that's exactly what the ratio says for the diameter of the rocket tube. So this stuff isn't very expensive, but I happen to have a garbage piece laying around the house that's got dirt all over it, so free to me. And then this was really expensive, and I knew I was gonna use this because it works really, really well, and it's easy to glue that, because this is a board that's made out of PVC. Sometimes it's, it's referred to as Sintra by people who do craft stuff, but it's aerated PVC. It's like a solid board of it, but it's not actually solid, they aerate it. Right there, there's bubbles all through the middle of it, and that makes it carvable and formable, and it's easy to cut, and it's paintable, just like any other PVC. And then this is my EVA foam that I picked up, and I got different thicknesses of it at the craft store, and then I got a big pack with a bunch of colors in it, but it doesn't matter, because it's all gonna get painted. I need to find another tube for the back section because in the back of that picture it necks down a little bit and then there's a little slightly smaller diameter tube in the back that will have like where the exhaust comes out. I don't know what I'm going to do for that yet. But this board has wood grain on one side and then the other side is perfectly smooth so I'll just have to sand the wood grain off the other side but the majority of it's going to get covered in EVA foam anyway. Now you might be wondering how I figured out these materials. Well, a lot of it is just from walking around the hardware store. Once you come up with a plan, or at least you know the dimensions of something, you can figure out what you're trying to do, and then just go wander around the hardware store, and you will magically find things that work for the project that you're trying to do. It does take a fair amount of time, but you'll come up with stuff. And this stuff is awesome. Uh, if you're gonna try to make something, and you don't want to use wood because it's going to show the grain, this is your best alternative. PVC pipe you can use for all sorts of stuff. I mean, look up PVC hacks. People have done everything with it. And then uh, the other point that I want to make in this video is that if you're afraid to start a project, you just need to dive in. No matter what you're thinking about doing, dive into it. You might come to a stopping point where you need a tool and you don't own it and you have to wait until you get the money to buy it. But it, it's when you reach those points that makes you good at this because when you do hit those times when you slow down and you're not sure what to do to overcome a problem when you're trying to build something, that's when you learn about something else or you figure out how to use something that's not meant to be used to do what you're trying to get done. And you'll probably see that at least a couple times while I'm building this rocket launcher this week. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe to catch the rest of the videos and go check out my other stuff and see what I've built in the past. Back from the dead.